Friends, this is Father Nelson Boren. Welcome to the Meditation Garden. Let us uphold Jesus incarnate, revealing himself and his message to us in the scripture readings today. Today, the Easter season concludes with Pentecost Sunday, commemorating the birth of the Church, when the Father and the Son poured out the Holy Spirit in a special way on the Apostles. Since then, the Apostles took up the mission of proclaiming the Gospel throughout the whole world. The Holy Spirit throughout the Church's history has showered down gifts upon her to keep her faithful to the teaching she's received from our Lord and to keep the fires burning to inspire hearts to turn to our Lord and be reconciled with God and with humanity. In today's first reading, with wind and fire, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the apostles in a way that cannot be contained. Let us therefore ask the Holy Spirit to enkindle our hearts and receive the gifts necessary for us to continue proclaiming the good news to the whole world. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews, from every nation under heaven, living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking, in their own language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking, Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking, about God's deeds of power. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord! The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your Spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God, who activates all of them, in everyone. To each is given, the manifestation of the Spirit, for the common good. For just as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit, we were all baptized, into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink, of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In today's second reading, Paul reminds us that the presence and action of the Holy Spirit are often perceived as gifts, gifts for the edification and unity of the Church. Our gifts are meant to be used to advance the mission of the Church in proclaiming the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit gifts us the gift of prayer to express in faith that Jesus is Lord. It is only in the Holy Spirit that we can pray as we ought. By ourselves, we can do nothing. The spiritual gifts are unified in the Church through their source, the Holy Spirit. The ways we serve are unified in serving our Lord. All the workings of the Spirit in us come from God. Each gift is for our benefit, another's, or both. In times when we don't feel like praying, ask the Holy Spirit to ignite our hearts as in the prayer, Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. This prayer, as simple as it appears, but is a prayer to the Holy Spirit that can change hearts to know, serve, and to love God, so that through the workings of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we too, may be an instrument of change in the world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was evening, on that day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house, where the disciples had met, were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced, when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, we have been reflecting that the Holy Spirit is the source of the unified gifts in the Church and in our lives. In today's Gospel, we're reminded of one of the Spirit's greatest gifts, a gift our Lord conferred to the Apostles on the eve of His resurrection, the gift of reconciliation with God. Our Lord first bestows the gift of reconciliation with His dearest friends, the friends who abandoned Him in His moment of need, peace be with you. It's no coincidence that he repeats this desire for reconciliation, even as he is breathing the Holy Spirit upon them. It is the Holy Spirit who makes reconciliation possible. The Spirit raised Jesus from the dead and gave him new life, so that reconciliation would be possible. One of the most saddening ways to break off a relationship with someone is to say, you are dead to me, as if the relationship to that person has died. But in God's eyes, even in those situations, the Spirit can make that person come alive again, through the grace of mercy, whether mercy received or mercy given. The separation between God and man, recalled by the story of the Tower of Babel, is reversed by the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. In pride, man distanced himself from God and his fellow human being and communication broke down. Through the gift of tongues, as we heard in the first reading, 
the Holy Spirit re-establishes the lines of communication. In the Spirit, humanity reconciles not only with God, but with our fellow human beings. Yes, the Holy Spirit is the source of the unified gifts in the Church and in our lives. Sometimes, we describe talented people as gifted. It implies that their talents are not just thanks to their skill, but to someone who has given them. Let's take for example the birth of a child in our family. Life itself is a gift from God and our parents. Without them, none of our other qualities or talents would exist, much less matter. A gift implies a relationship between the giver and the recipient, and not just any relationship. A gift implies fondness, appreciation, and acknowledgement. If you give expecting something in return, you are bribing, not truly giving. The Holy Spirit never needs anything from us, yet the Spirit still showers His gifts upon us. Just as God and our parents work together to give us the gift of life, the Holy Spirit wants to work with us to share His gifts with others. At Pentecost, we see this play out. The Spirit doesn't just inspire the apostles, He sends them out to share the good news, just as our Lord did on the evening of Easter Sunday. The gifts of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday were crowning gifts for the good of the Church and the world. Today is not just a moment to ask the Spirit for more gifts, although they are abundant, it is a moment to take stock of all the spiritual gifts we have received in gratitude. We may receive gifts that we don't think we need and hide them in the closet all the time. It's time for us to step up, share any of the Holy Spirit's gifts with others. St. Paul reminds us today that gifts are for the benefit of someone. Ask the Holy Spirit to show us how we can best use His gifts. After all, the Holy Spirit is the source of all these good gifts through the grace of God. Let us pray. God our loving Father, we praise and thank you for this day. Be present to your people, O Lord, and gladden us with holy joys, love, and peace. Make us rejoice, O Lord, in devout thanksgiving, for the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and us. As we commemorate the birth of the Church, we thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, in a special way into our hearts, so that we can continue the mission of proclaiming the Gospel throughout the whole world. Lord, I pray for those who are sick, whose prayers have been promised for them, and those who are asking for prayers during this time of need. Send them your healing power, comfort, and peace during this time, and those who care for them. May your word touch our hardened hearts caused by sin, that we may rise to reach out to your merciful heart. Thank you, Lord, for sending us the Holy Spirit, that has filled our hearts with your peace. Empower us with your love, through your Spirit dwelling within us. Lord, bring all those who have gone before us to your eternal peace so that, one day, we shall meet them again in the fullness of your glory. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord! The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. 
when you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. 